So I've received questions periodically over the last year about potential contaminants, whether accidental or intentional, found in local anesthetics used in dentistry. Now this stemmed from several sources, perhaps the most well-known being Dr. Anna Maria Mahaisha. Um, I think I'm pronouncing it close to correct. Um, and using dark field microscopy, she found unexpected or perhaps she expected materials in blood and many other different substances like local anesthetics used in dentistry. Now, I'm not going to get into her research here, but I will link it below for you to look for yourself. Once I saw this, I was immediately really skeptical, but because I had more than one question about it, you know, multiple patients were asking me and because obviously it's really important to me that the dentistry I provide is safe. I went directly to the manufacturer of my favorite anesthetics and asked the questions. And really and truly, they put my mind at ease. They took my phone call, were super responsive on the phone to questions that I had that were admittedly a little bit out there. The person I talked to got my email address and said she would forward to the appropriate point person. Uh, and then what she told me is, she said, Dr. Ingram, if there were any changes in the ingredients, the product would be forced to go through the FDA regulatory process all over again. And that hasn't happened. So a couple of days later, I got a follow-up email as promised, and they assured me that there were no added ingredients no graphene oxide, and no mRNA technology used to formulate the anesthetics that I use. So I dropped it. I was satisfied, and I had no other sources of information that would suggest anything else was going on. And quite frankly, I was super skeptical of Dr. Mahaisha's findings. Because here was my thinking. I haven't changed anesthetics since long before 2020, and there have been no changes in how my anesthetic performs, in how often we have negative reactions, and how often we have complications, et cetera, et cetera. No changes. And I reasoned that this took care of any doubt in my mind that there was anything added at the manufacturing level. And, and we're, we're just going to go there. If the dark forces of the world are so sneaky and malicious to add something to our medications the, that even the manufacturers didn't know, then it's most likely everywhere. It's hopeless to avoid it. And there's not really much we can do about it. And I'm not going to live in fear. But the questions haven't stopped. And people smarter than me have continued to ask even better questions than I had. One of those smart people is Dr. Jim Lundstrom. He's another biological dentist located in Fargo, North Dakota. And Dr. Lundstrom has reached out to multiple manufacturers of dental anesthetics and contacted multiple testing facilities and is publishing what he learns on his own practice website, which I will link below as well. And for most of the last year, the few answers he did receive supported my earlier view that there's perhaps not much to this, unless you are really deep into conspiracy theories. And if you are, that's okay, because some days I land in that group too. Now, just within the last couple of weeks, a report came back from the University of Colorado who tested samples of an anesthetic called Oroblock, which contains articaine with epinephrine. It's a really common anesthetic. And they used something called Raymond or Raman, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, Raman uh, microspectroscopy. 
Now, this was an anesthetic where the manufacturer was, again, very clear in stating that none of the nanotech materials that we mentioned were a part of their anesthetic. The University of Colorado said in their report that, and I'm quoting here, that they, quote, can affirm the presence of graphene oxide particles in this anesthetic with high confidence. Was this a coincidence? Maybe. A contamination? Maybe. But it does support what Dr. Mahisha has been finding, which is weird. Two different types of microscopes at two very different testing facilities, finding the same contaminant seems odd. Now, one scientist you could probably argue is biased toward finding something nefarious. But I was, would assume that the scientists at the University of Colorado would not have the same bias. So is it possible that the presence of graphene or hydrogels or other nanotechnology is considered a benefit? Yeah, absolutely. If you do a little bit of research on these materials, there is a lot of studying showing the benefits of graphene in dental applications, like tissue regeneration around implants and increasing the active time of anesthetics. How do I feel about this? I don't quite know yet. It is clear that many in the scientific community proclaim the benefits of these substances, but also, why wouldn't it be disclosed or listed in the ingredients? Now, obviously, you're listening to, listening to me now because I feel like this is information that I am ethically obligated to share with all of you, even if I don't know quite what it means yet. It's concerning enough that I can't unsee it, and I don't think we should ignore it. But I also have no intention of fear-mongering. I would love to see arguments from scientists, whether mainstream or not mainstream, with logical explanations on what we're seeing in these dark field and Raymond microscopy studies. Do I think that my anesthetic is unsafe? Well, I sure hope not. And I don't have any clinical evidence to make me believe that it is. Again, it's performing exactly the same as it always has. But that's also how I felt about amalgam fillings and fluoride until I didn't. Do I think that patients should avoid anesthetic at the dentist? I can't answer that for you. I want you to talk it over with your healthcare providers. I can tell you that the vast majority of dental procedures cannot be done with out anesthetic. And dental care is still vitally important to your health. And like I said before, I don't think we should live in fear. If there are dark forces at work here, and if Dr. Mahaisha's findings are correct, then we are potentially exposed to interesting materials and contaminants everywhere whether we're at the dentist or at the grocery store. What I do feel strongly about is that we should insist on more testing. Large groups of biological dentists, the IAOMT and the IABDM, should make this a priority. The public will have to demand that further testing be done. And those of us privileged enough to work in this space should invest our own money in this testing. It won't happen quickly because nothing in healthcare does and good science takes time, but it really should be done. I can tell you it will be an uphill battle. We are still fighting to get mercury out of dentistry. Mercury. So I hope that those of you watching will do several things. Number one, demand further testing. Reach out to your own dentist and to groups like the IAOMT and the IABDM and let them know if this is something you're concerned about. Number two, 
If at all possible, align yourself with a biological dentist. If you were trying to convince your dentist that mercury might not be a great material to have in your mouth, it's probably going to be hard to convince them to test the anesthetic they've used for the last 30 years. So I will have links below to the organizations where you can find a directory of these like-minded dentists. And number three, pray. Because, you know, there are dark forces around us and they are sowing fear whether there's anything contam contaminating our medications or not. Now, I can't give you any medical advice, but many of the doctors researching the, this strange phenomena in human blood have found several supplements to be helpful in supporting your body's ability to degrade and detox from any potential contaminants. I'll share those below as well if you want to have some on hand before your next dental appointment. You know, I have no idea how this will land, if I'll get in trouble from the dental establishment or if I'll get snubbed by the Alex Jones fans for not sounding the alarm bells fast enough or loud enough, perhaps both. But I can tell you that this is the state of dentistry as I see it right now. I'll keep you updated as I learn more and I will keep doing some more digging. And I'm still a skeptic to any new bit of data. Hopefully, that helps me filter through the garbage for all of you. So, I'm so grateful for you all. And we'll see you soon.